Welcome to another video in hematology. This will be an introduction to hematocrit. At the end of the video, you should know the definition of hematocrit. You should have familiarized yourself with the different significance or importance of hematocrit. And you should also know some diseases that are correlated to an increase or a decrease in hematocrit. Let us start with the definition of hematocrit. Hematocrit is also abbreviated into HCT. So hematocrit is defined as the volume of packed red blood cells that occupies a given volume of blood. So let us clarify in a given volume of blood and not the whole or the total blood volume of the person. So for example, we have this much packed red cell volume in relation to this given volume of blood or this given volume of sample, this packed red blood cell is now our hematocrit. Okay. Now, since hematocrit is the packed cell volume of red blood cell in a given sample, another term given to it is packed cell volume or PCV. Now, PCV and hematocrit may be used interchangeably. But even so, the ICSH, which stands for the International Council for Standardization and Hematology, has suggested that the term hematocrit should be used compared to PCV if the result is a measurement from an automated analyzer. Why would that be? Because machines or automated analyzers do not actually pack the red blood cell in a given sample, but they use a different technology. An example of this technology is impedance technology where the analyzer would check each individual red blood cell so that they can come up with a hematocrit. And with a principle like this, the term hematocrit would be more proper. Hematocrit is reported in either by percentage or by liters per liter. There are other names for hematocrit aside from PCV, and one of these are EVF or erythrocyte volume fraction and VPRC, which stands for volume of packed red cell. The term hematocrit comes from two Greek words, hyma and critase. Hyma means blood, while krites means to judge or to gauge blood. With these two terms, hematocrit now means to separate blood. In 1891, a Swedish physiologist who is Magnus Blix was the one who coined the term hematocrit. Now, if hematocrit can be abbreviated into HCT, in medical slang, hematocrit is also known as Crit. Let's now proceed to the importance of hematocrit. As defined earlier, hematocrit is the volume of red blood cells that have been packed, and red blood cells have something to do with the delivery of oxygen from the lungs to the different parts of the body or to the different body tissue. So therefore, if we have a measurement of hematocrit, we will have a good reference value or a good standpoint in the body's capability to deliver oxygen. Therefore, hematocrit is essential or is important in the examination of blood so that we can arrive to a diagnosis. Examples of which are anemia and polycythemia vera. So in this picture, as we can see, there is low packed cell volume or a decreased hematocrit. So we can assume that a patient might have anemia. And in this picture where too much red blood cells is seen, therefore we can assume that the patient might have a condition called polycythemia vera, which is described to have too much red blood cells. There are two different methods in measuring hematocrit. We have the manual methods and the automated methods. These two different types of methods will be described or explained in another video. The general idea for hematocrit is that when a whole blood sample is spun or is centrifuged, it will be divided into three different layers which are based on the weight of the cell. So at the bottom, 
would be the formed elements or the red blood cells. And the one in the middle would be the buffy coat. And the one on top would be the liquid portion of the blood or the plasma since we use anticoagulated sample. The red blood cells at the bottom would be measured and this would now be the hematocrit value. I would like to give you an example of a bone marrow aspirate so that you can see a difference in the layers that they have formed. So at the very bottom is the erythrocyte layer. So this is the RBC layer. The next layer would be the myeloid erythroid layer or the buffy coat. And the third layer is the plasma. The difference is the fourth layer on top, which is made up mostly of fat and perivascular layer. To elaborate more on the different layers that are formed after centrifugation, first we have the buffy coat. So what is in the buffy coat? The buffy coat contains the leukocytes and the platelets. And when we say leukocytes, these are the different neutrophils, lymphocytes, monocytes, eosinophils, and basophils. Platelets would be on top of the leukocytes as the leukocytes would be heavier than platelets. In the plasma portion, it can be divided into three. So the one at the lowest part is other solutes, which, which touches the buffy coat. And we have the ions, different nutrients, waste products, gases, and regulatory substances. Water makes up most of the plasma. And the different proteins would be at the very top. Examples of proteins would be albumin, globulin, fibrinogen, and prothrombin. Okay, so let's have a little activity before we proceed with the different disorders or conditions that are associated with hematocrit. So these are all different test tubes with the same amount of blood, but with different amounts of hematocrit, buffy coat, and plasma. So what I want you to do now is to match these different diagnoses to the different test tubes that they belong to. The first test tube will serve as your normal value or your reference value. I will give you 30 seconds to match the diagnosis with the test tubes and go. All right, time is up everyone. So the second tube, the diagnosis would be anemia because of the decreased hematocrit. For the third tube, it's PCV because of the increased hematocrit. The next tube is infection because of the increase in the layer of the buffy coat, indicating an increase in the white blood cell count. The next tube is leukemia because of the increase in the buffy coat and a decrease in the hematocrit level. The next tube is jaundice and infection. Please note the yellowish or the yellowing of the plasma and the increase in buffy coat. And lastly, we have the tube with anemia and hemolysis. Hemolysis because of the reddening of the plasma portion indicating the lysis of red blood cells and anemia because of the decrease in hematocrit level. To use hematocrit values to correlate it with the different conditions that a patient might have, we should know the different normal values. And for this, we have used Rodak's hematology book as the reference guide. The hematocrit values may be divided into five. Generally, we have a value for newborn, one month to one year old children, children in general, male and female. As you can see, the normal values for hematocrit fluctuates. It is highest in the newborn going up to 68% and declines as the patient matures. When it comes to adulthood, the male hematocrit level is higher compared to the female hematocrit level. So what are the different conditions that can cause an increase in the hematocrit level? These different conditions may either be physiologic or the meaning that they are not 
abnormal, they may be under normal circumstances, or they can either be pathologic where a condition or a disease is causing the increase in the hematocrit level. An example of the physiologic increase in hematocrit would be seen in newborns where it is considered as a compensatory mechanism by the infant because in the intrauterine environment there is a tissue level hypoxia that may be seen so the newborn or the infant needs to compensate for this hypoxia another physiologic example would be in high altitude where for example, the people living in high places like in Baguio or in Tagaytay would have a high hematocrit level because in high altitudes, there is relatively lower amounts of oxygen. So the body has to compensate for this hypoxia so that it increases the ability to uh, transport oxygen. Pathologic conditions that may cause an increase in hematocrit would be, for example, dengue shock syndrome, uh, different heart and lung disease and certain tumors and again these are just examples this is not a complete list these are just some of the conditions that can cause an increase in hematocrit levels so what about a decrease in the hematocrit level mostly the causes of this are pathologic conditions so for example, we have anemia, which is a very common cause of a decrease in hematocrit, since anemia would cause a decrease in the red blood cell, therefore there would also be a decrease in the hematocrit. Pregnancy may cause a decrease in hematocrit as well. Malnutrition and iron deficiency, these are examples where iron is needed, but in iron deficiency, it may be caused by other things like in, for example, due to blood loss during menstruation, or it can also be with uh, inadequate food intake. For hemorrhage, there can also be a lot of different causes. So hemorrhage is when there is blood loss or when there is bleeding. Examples would be when there is traumatic injury or maybe during ac an accident, or it can also be caused by certain conditions like colon cancer, and so on and so forth. Overhydration is an example of a false decrease in hematocrit. So let's say, for example, this is your blood specimen and this is your hematocrit. This is the normal hematocrit value. For overhydration, we have the same amount of hematocrit, normal value of hematocrit, but since we are overhydrated, that means there is an increase in the liquid portion of the blood. So if we test this hematocrit level in relation to the total volume of blood of the specimen, it would look like there is a decrease in the hematocrit value. So again, these are just examples of the different conditions that may cause a decrease in hematocrit levels. We are now done with the introduction to hematocrit. Make sure you watch the next video, which gives you an overview of the different methods in testing hematocrit. Thank you for watching.